We live in an increasingly fractured and distant world. The information we get, even from people in positions of authority, is conflicting at best, but downright dangerous at worst. Who can I trust, especially when lives are at stake? For many, the fear of the unknown leads us to forge our own belief systems, mistrusting the so-called experts and falling into conspiracy theories. Even if you can take the emotion out of information that we're sold, how can you be sure that what people are telling you is correct? How can we stay sceptical, informed, safe? And who can we trust outside ourselves? In this episode of Science with Steph, I'm going to explain why we might fall for conspiracy theories and how we can spot and debunk them. If you're new to my channel, I tend to make pretty light-hearted, science-y stuff with a pop culture twist. But in this episode, I wanted to tackle something really important, and that's misinformation. Now, having said that, I am only one person. I feel like I've researched this video really well. Um, but if you have any discussion points or want to say something, please leave it in the comment section down below. And above all, please be civil down there. So with the etiquette out of the way, let's go on to my first point. Humans are really good at spotting patterns. Suspiciously good. Many people, and not just within the scientific community, say that people who believe in mind control and UFOs and healing crystals are stupid or just fall for any old crap. But I wouldn't say this is necessarily true. Conspiracy theories are widespread and have existed throughout history. In the burning of Rome in 64 AD, rumours flew that Emperor Nero started the fires in order to rebuild Rome from scratch the way he wanted, while Nero believed that Christians had conspired to burn down the city. Fast forward a few thousand years, and today over 60% of people in the UK believe in at least one theory that could be called conspiratorial. That is an event or a set of circumstances that are the result of a secret plot by usually powerful conspirators. Some biologists think that we are hardwired to fall for conspiracy theories, since you're more likely to survive if you see danger in benign things around you, rather than willingly falling into traps. Basically, our brains have evolved to be better safe than sorry. As a species, we are excellent at pattern recognition, even in random collections. We're great at advanced threat management and tactics, and we have a healthy dose of imagination. These are basically all the ingredients we need to fall prey to conspiracy theories. Throw in fear, uncertainty, and a universal feeling of lack of control, and you have the perfect recipe for a world where everybody believes something different and none of it is true. But so what? If I want to believe that aliens live among us or that NASA is lying to me about the shape of the Earth, what does it matter? Well, I would say to you that this is really important and it does matter. And here's why. Firstly, not all conspiracy theories are made equal. Take the vaccines cause autism conspiracy. This was started from one fraudulent scientific study back in the 90s that gained a lot of popularity. Since then, dozens of other studies have been conducted that disprove this theory. And not only was the original paper redacted from the medical journal, but the doctor in charge of the study has had his medical license revoked. However, the damage was already done. The anti-vax movement gained momentum, and with the rise of internet forums at the turn of the century, it also gained a voice. The result is that while in the US the measles was completely eradicated in the year 2000 due to the success of vaccination efforts, a combination of increased travel and anti-vax sentiment has meant that there's been a re-emergence of measles in recent years, which is really dangerous. This anti-scientific thinking combined with this one kind of benign idea is putting lives at risk. If only there was some kind of objective process for determining what is true. Independent of who, what, why and where you are. Oh yeah! Science! So get ready troops, I have a science-based myth-busting checklist ready-made exactly for you. Hopefully you can follow this and we can all grow smarter together. Firstly, when you see or hear information that stirs your emotions, makes you angry or scared or shocked, do not, no, don't hit that share button. Ah. 
This is one of the first ways that conspiracies seduce you. To get a lie so emotive and powerful, it spread twice around the world before the truth has managed to get its shoes on. Pause for a moment and put on your sciencey skeptical hat. I have my cynical Steph hat right here. <laughs> Ask yourself, where is the evidence for this? It can sometimes be hard to tell when evidence is real or when it's either circumstantial or just straight up made up. Here is a map of COVID-19 cases globally and here is a plot of 5G cell phone towers. Now, the conspiracy theorist in you will tell you that these two are linked and that 5G is causing the faster spread of coronaviruses. But I can't say this loud enough. Correlation does not mean causation! <laughs> if you pause and think about it a bit harder, you can see that actually both of these are possibly proportional to population density. Of course viruses spread faster in areas with a more dense population and it's in these areas where there is a demand for 5G or where that demand is highest. So I'll say it again, because something is correlated or linked doesn't mean one thing creates the other. It's always better to factor in all the information we have before jumping to conclusions. Let's look at other ways people present evidence like in graphs. This is a pie chart describing my favourite bars. <laughs> And this is a bar graph describing my favourite pies. As much as I love them, graphs can be misleading. I was witness to this only recently. I was part of a diversity awareness session at work where the talk of the gender pay gap came up. Now this is an area where depending on how you cut your data, you can get very differing results. However, there was a genuine study done for academic applications where the exact same resumes were sent to universities, but half were named John and half were named Jennifer. One result showed that the starting salary offered to the Johns was higher than to the Jennifers, which is really bad, right? But look at how the results were presented here. The graph cuts off at 25k, where zero normally is, making it look like Jennifer was only offered about a third of John's salary. Look, your point is already made. The evidence is right there. Women get paid less for the exact same job with having the exact same skills as men do. You don't need to exaggerate the results by cutting off your graphs at weird places. I'm not going to name names about who presented this data here, but come on, people. Just present it in a way that's fair. Anecdotes aside, if you ever see evidence that's presented in a graph, always always look at the labels. They tell you a lot about what the presenter is trying to tell you or hide from you. The second item on my checklist to look for is this. What's the cost benefit? What's the cost of the conspiracy versus the benefit to the conspirators? A classic example of this is that Big Pharma is hiding the cure to cancer somewhere because they want to keep people trapped in the cycle of sickness. But ask yourself this, how many very very rich people are willing to pay lots of money to cure themselves of cancer. What's the benefit to keeping something like that under wraps? If it costs that much more to hide the conspiracy than it is to reveal it, then that's a major red flag. The third thing on my checklist is this. How many strings are in the spider's web? Does this conspiracy require the cooperation of many countries? Does it involve the corruption of government, law, business and democracy. Now, I'm not saying that countries can't cooperate and I'm not saying that there isn't corruption of our authorities, but it's a good question to ask. How many layers of corruption or deceit are there? How many people have to keep quiet? And how many chances are there for whistleblowers? Look at the flat earth theory. If we push all scientific, photographic and eyewitness evidence aside and just pretend it's all made up just for a second, the thing I cannot believe and I just can't get past is that all of America, Russia, China, Europe and India are somehow all working together to lie to us sheeple about the shape of the earth. <laughs> uh, I don't buy it. I, I just don't buy it. The fourth thing is this. Check the source. In these days of social media and polarising politics, it's easy to have two pieces of information completely contradict each other about the same story. Either that or we find ourselves in echo chambers where exaggerated or misleading information is bounced around without ever being questioned because it fits in with the existing beliefs of everyone it's being shared with. Unbiased news, for good or for bad, doesn't exist. News outlets exist to sell a narrative and so everything is filtered to fit that narrative. 
This would be okay if media outlets were just upfront about their agendas. We can all think of some really biased or sensationalist news outlet. We all know they have biases to one political party or another. But when they claim to bring unbiased experts who are either purely partisan or just not experts, then that's where it gets messy. So at this point, you can put your skeptic hat back on and know why you might be to being told certain facts and so you can know where the biases might lay. So firstly, right, you want to check the sources. Did the article you read quote a statistic? Check that statistic out for yourself. The thing about scientific studies is that every result has caveats and metadata around it. This 20% might only be the worst case scenario or only when patients had pre-existing health conditions or whatever. Most of the time, the media take the most fringe result that fits their story and don't mention all the ifs and buts. Scientists love themselves a good caveat. So believe the metadata and not the media sensation. Basically, if a pharmaceutical company has sponsored a study into the health benefits of a drug that they sell, you can probably expect that they will report more on the positive results and downplay or even misreport the bad results. But if you know who is publishing the study, you can combat this misinformation. And so my final and most important checklist item, and I'm going to quote the great Carl Sagan here, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. For this last point, I want to share a joke. An engineer, a physicist and a mathematician were heading on a train north from England and crossed the border into Scotland, where they saw a brown cow. The engineer looked out the window and said, look, Scottish cows are brown. And the physicist said, no, 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 some Scottish cows are brown. And the mathematician looked irritated. And he said, there is at least one field containing at least one cow, at least one side of which is brown. So this joke is terrible and probably only funny for like four people. But it illustrates just how scientists treat information. We observe things around us, make hypotheses or predictions, and then we test those predictions, trying to disprove as much as we can. And then we adjust our hypotheses until we get close to objective truth as we can. You could argue that there is no objective truth and that everything we observe is filtered through our own personal experience. But that's why every hypothesis is tested until it is changed, dismissed, or eventually has enough facts to back up or to support it to become a theory. The more theories are tested, the closer scientists come to a scientific consensus. Like climate change. 30 years ago, there were lots of different hypotheses about the causes of climate change and the level of human impact and the predictions for the future. Theories were tested and as much more and more observations were made, soon enough, 98% of all scientists came to the conclusion that global warming is real and global warming is caused chiefly by human activity. If a theory is found to completely change what we know about the world around us, then there needs to be lots of facts and evidence to back it up. If tests can't be replicated or verified, and if the hypothesis doesn't hold up in other scenarios or locations or times, then that theory is dropped or changed and the science moves on. Now, the scientific method isn't perfect. A lot of what it takes to get recognised and published relies too much on personalities, what institution you're in and sadly, money. But at the moment, it's the best system we have to get closer to the truth of it all. Some of you watching may have already fallen for some conspiracy lies. Maybe it's the one thing you feel you have some control over in this chaotic world. But ask yourself, does what I believe stand up to the scrutiny of this checklist? I'm not here trying to tell you to stop being you and stop questioning the world around you. I absolutely believe that there's a little scientist in each and every one of us questioning how things work and whether what we see on the face of it is the whole story. But when it comes to knowing how to care for our planet or our bodies, I have a lot of trust in scientists. Yes, some may falsify evidence or lie to get ahead. Some may take money and have conflicts of interest. Scientists are people too. They are infallible. But the point of testing predictions across different times in different countries and from all angles, and then documenting and peer reviewing our predictions is that this method removes most of those problems. And what you're left with is hopefully good enough answers that tell us a lot about the world. And also that it is definitely globe shaped. 
So what are your thoughts? Do you have stories about conspiracy theories you've believed or have believed in the past? Do you struggle with people trying to sell you fiction dressed up as facts? I'll be hanging out in the comments section down below and I would love to have a discussion about this. If you found this video useful, please share it with your friends and family. It really helps my channel out and hopefully it will help them make better decisions. And if you want to help this channel out even further, please consider subscribing and tapping that notification bell so that you're aware of when I'm next going to upload. And in the meantime, if you want to watch my last episode, which was about Ariel from The Little Mermaid and how she could lose her voice, you can click the video right there. Or if you want to watch the video that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy best, you can click down there. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.